Welcome to another Panther Podcast Weekly. This week, we're going to be checking in with the Ohio Dominican Women's Basketball Program. Now, a reminder that you can catch all of our past episodes of Panther Podcast Weekly by going to YouTube, search Ohio Dominican Athletics, also subscribe to our page, and you can check out any of the previous episodes, as well as the Student Athlete Award Show and my interview with Mark Miller from a couple of weeks ago, a previous alum from Ohio Dominican Athletics. Last winter, Lindsey Warren guided the Ohio Dominican basketball team to its fifth consecutive winning season and an appearance in the GMAC postseason tournament. This coming season will be her ninth year as head coach of the Ohio Dominican Panthers. Coach Warren, thanks for being with us here today on Panther Podcast Weekly. I want to start with in previous episodes, I've been talking with coaches about how at that time they've been communicating with their teams. As we progress, the restrictions have kind of been lifted and eased a little bit. So I guess I want to move things forward with you. What can you and most of our coaches do now that some of these restrictions have been lifted with their with your team? Well, one uh, which is really exciting is that we can work out with players who request a workout. So I can be on the court with an athlete who uh, asks for a workout. So they want to come in and shoot. Uh, they want to come in and get some skill work done on the court. Uh, right now in our first phase, uh, for us at Ohio Dominican, that means we can have small groups. So I can have as many as 10 players on the court or 10 people on the court and five people at each basket. So that's exciting. I've had I've had quite a few girls come in and uh, the last week or so and get a workout in. So it's fun to see them in June and work out with them in June, which is not something we've been able to do before. I'm going to assume, as you say, they can request a workout, that they have been requesting them at a record pace just to get out of the house and to, to get back to the sport that they love. Right. It is. I know that they've been able to do things on their own and limitedly within their uh, situations, uh, but they have been uh, eager to reach out and eager to get on the court, not only just with me, but with each other. So I had a few of the seniors on Monday uh, come in and it was great to see them together. And it was such a difference to have them versus having some younger players who had come in. They just talk so well uh, and it's exciting. It, It gets me really pumped for this coming season. So every school is like this, but we really preach the family atmosphere here. And the, the players certainly will say that when they're asked about what is it that they like about being here. So how frustrating has it been for you, who has such a great family culture within your team, to not be hands-on with your ladies since mid-March? It's been terribly hard. I think that, you know, within COVID-19, it really put the summer few months uh, earlier. So, you know, when I go through... Uh, June and July and a part of August, I, I get this kind of, oh, it's nice to have a little bit of a break, but I then lose a sense of purpose a little bit. And I think for, you know, our team, we, we get disconnected and they, they love each other, but, you know, they're home with their families or they're working and they're doing different, maybe they're traveling and they're just disconnected. You know, they don't see each other every day. And so to have that time period uh, be extended to five months uh, and more is is just uh, it, it's kind of sickening. It was hard for me. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I'm so grateful that the NCAA made this new legislation because you know from March, April, and May, all those months, I, I you know I I was limited. They were limited, and so now to have everybody um, you know have the ability to get on campus and see each other in person has been just uplifting. I will say the one thing that has really kept that kind of family atmosphere has been 
in a, in a weird sort of way or in a, in a way that as much as it can be is technology. So we've been able to do calls and video chats. And, you know, I was just on the, on FaceTime with my senior class. And, you know, I think that one thing that COVID did teach us was that we can still stay connected through the summer months when we aren't in person all the time. Uh, we can, we can stay connected through video and through different resources. So that's been great. Yeah, there, a lot of us have been forced to learn technology in a different yeah. way. Uh, and, and as you said, primarily for the good, things like this are, are now video podcasts, something we'd never even imagined doing, but right. here we are now doing them and allowing a Panther Nation to stay connected with all of our sports. Um, I remember as since I've been here since we were the NAIA days and transitioning to Division Two, every time something came up, there was a question can we do that? It, you know, because we went from NAI rules to right. which were basically nothing to NCAA, which is if you sneeze, you got to check see if it's a violation or not. But everything's kind of changed for all of the coaches now. I imagine you guys all have to take a step back, take a deep breath. If you're talking with our athletic director, Jeff Blair, or assistant AD, Sandy Rally, like, hey, are we doing the right thing to make sure that you stay within the boundaries? Absolutely. And, you know, it's rules and it's comparison as always. So we're allowed to do this. What is another school doing with their program? What What's happening? What should I be doing? And I think for me, uh, of course, following the rules is so important, but just staying connected and realizing that that is my priority. You talked about our family atmosphere. So if I'm concerned about how many players are getting in the gym to work out or how many times we've done a workout or are they doing their lifting, you know, I, I really want my priority to be our connection and our relationship. And that's something that I've learned uh, and just has, has, I guess, been reminded of over these last couple of months that that should be brought into everything that we do. Uh, and I think that that will help us, you know, translate to that trust that we, we need on the court all the time. Across all the divisions at of NCAA, they're putting in their own kind of seasonal regulations. One at the Division II level is the regular season maximum amount of games has been trimmed a little bit. We've seen it in football from 11 to 10. I know in basketball, you're allowed to play up to 28. Next coming season, you're only going to be allowed to play up to 22 to try and limit travel and some of those types of things. So at least you have some sort of a sense of what your season can look like. How much thought have you put into what a 22 game schedule that I know you don't know is intact right now, because they're still trying to put it together might look like and, and how you'll prepare for your season. Well, I think it'll, uh, hopefully it'll start a little bit later. You know, if that opening weekend uh, where we typically play that crossover tournament, that won't happen. Uh, That'll be nice to give us a little bit more time to get situated and get used to each other. Um, and I think that there will be it'll just be spaced out a little bit more because we're playing 22 games. We still want it to go you know, through the end of February and to have a typical season because in terms of duration. So I think that it'll be spread out more. Uh, and, you know, for for us, it's most likely going to be conference only. So we'll we'll be playing uh, the GMAC schools twice at home and, and away. So we'll know our opponents very well and we'll, we'll have time to prepare for them and hopefully more time to prepare for them. Um, so I'm very interested to see what the schedule looks like so we can start maybe scheming a little bit and getting used to when we see what opponents. And uh, I know that, you know, for us, we just want to be playing our best basketball uh, in February and going into March and that not only playing best basketball on the court, but everybody being healthy. Um, so starting date for us in preseason will be different. You know, we just got to make sure that um, all of it flows. And certainly an emphasis on every game because, yeah, your non-conference games are important, but I know you will, you'll play with rotations and starters yes. and these types of things. May not have that luxury moving forward this year. Especially when we find out who we start with and, right. you know, and that'll – Ready, set, go. You know, who are we <laughs> playing with? And, and we, you know, I was talking to, like I said before, our seniors, and they were asking some of these questions too. And uh, especially about like, you know, our regional games and the criteria to get into the tournament. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's another thing that's on their mind, which is great. I'm happy that they're thinking of that because it means they're competitive and that's what they want. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's when we've got to win. So not to put that much of weight and pressure on every game, but it is. It's important that we practice well so that we can go into every game being confident that we have a good chance to win. 
Lindsay, I mentioned it at the top, five consecutive winning seasons and appearances in postseason tournaments, whether it was in the GLIAC and now in the great Midwest. And people may look at that and say, okay, that's nice. And it's maybe not that impressive. But when you compare it to other schools in the state, it's very impressive. What do you attribute the consistency that your program has had? Uh, you know, again, eight years, the last five of your have, have been really good winning seasons. What are what do you really look at and say, this is why we've been able to be successful? And, and how do you promote that to, uh, you know, when you're trying to recruit? In the simplest form, I would just say it is. It's the it's the people that we recruit and the people that are in our program and the people that we surround our program with. And uh, they're hard workers. Uh, they believe in what we're doing, and they want to continue to raise the bar. So, how you started that statement is, you know, some people might not think that that is that great. You know, we're we're part of that in the sense that that it's become normal for us to make it, and now it's not good enough for us to just make it. We want to do more, and I think that it is, you know, about not only surrounding ourselves with good people, but people who want to work to make those small steps because it just takes so much work to do that. Uh, so it, it's um, within hard work, it's just that attention to detail and, you know, whether that's in the classroom or whether that's just in your interactions with another human being and the respect you give people uh, or, you know, the amount of attention that you put in and effort you put into a drill or a rep in the weight room. I, I just think we have high quality and high character individuals in our program and around our program. Lindsay, let's let's talk about recruiting here briefly. Obviously that has changed quite a bit for you here in the in the past couple of months. Um, how has that approach been for you and your staff? And I, again, I know you'd love to have these uh, young ladies on our campus and try and sell the campus, but you haven't quite been able to do that. So how has the process of recruiting gone? It's been so different. And I think just like connecting with our team, we've all had to adjust. So whereas I'm not able to go out and physically watch somebody live, I had to watch a lot more film and request a lot more film and really emphasize, again, building a relationship, which is something that we always do. It was just having to be done remotely. Uh, so to finish our roster throughout the spring was challenging because I was doing Zoom calls with recruits that I love to meet in person and not just once, but multiple times. And then not just my staff and myself meeting them, but the team meeting them. So that was very different uh, because we had to do that remotely. And then going into the summer, we finally were able to you know, get back to campus with campus opening up. And so I've had a few younger players come to campus, which has been great. And uh, throughout the rest of the summer, it, it's just going to be a quiet period. So we're not able to go and watch anybody again. So it'll be important for us to continue to build relationships and at least get them on campus. You know, one thing that we missed too is our shootouts, um, something that we have with all of our high school teams, just great to see people play in the gym, get them exposed to our campus and in our atmosphere. Uh, it's high, you know, competitive basketball at the high school level. And so that was hard for us to miss. Uh, but just looking for different ways to stay in touch and to, uh, you know, through email and through watching them play in their film and their highlights and phone calls um, before we get them on campus and then getting them on campus. So it is, it's very different, but able to make it work somehow, some way. <laughs> Aside from that, how much has your recruiting philosophy or approach changed since you were a inexperienced year one head coach several years ago to now a more veteran coach? You know, in the beginning, I I thought I talked about the fit a lot and I thought I believed in the fit uh, and I I was capable of going a little bit of a different route too in, in looking more at the on-court type of stuff and, and, and skill and ability. Uh, I think that I put that a little bit more of a priority. The fit on the court um, was, was there in the beginning, uh, but now as I've become more experienced and and I've seen just the the extreme efforts to build our culture not just myself but my assistant coaches our surrounding and support staff and each player who's gone through this program has really committed to our culture and I don't want to jeopardize that at all so any red flag I really want to do my homework I want to listen to our current players I want my assistants to do their homework I want us to feel that that person 
that person is a fit for our culture because that really elevates the way that we play on on the court uh, when we're all committed to that. Uh, we've just experienced you know variations of that commitment. So if we're all committed to our culture, I think then you know we can really go far together. And I think that's what's changed over the years is that just extreme commitment to the culture and the person and the fit of the person, not just the athlete. I think all of those things have led to, again, some of the consistency and success that we've seen on the floor here in the past uh, half dozen years or so. Always a pleasure talking with you, Lindsay. I can't wait till we get to a, a sports season, uh, yes. get to see you back in the gym, uh, coaching and doing the things that you love to do uh, and uh, get to that uh, basketball season. Thanks for taking the time out. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Todd. That is head coach Lindsey Warner, the Ohio Dominican women's basketball program, and our department uh, look-in will continue. We'll visit with one of Coach Warren's student-athletes, Olivia Fox. All of that coming up after this as Panther Podcast Weekly continues. Advance your career in the healthcare industry with a master's in healthcare administration from Ohio Dominican University. At Ohio Dominican, I was able to earn my master's. It fit in perfectly around my schedule. I was able to advance my career and the content applied directly into my day-to-day -day working experiences, which was exciting to see that come to life immediately. Earn your master's online or on campus in just 18 months. Apply now at ohiodominican.edu slash healthcare. Panther Podcast Weekly continues. This is Todd Bell. Our department stop this week is Ohio Dominican Women's Basketball. And if you would like to keep up with the latest on their team, you can follow them on Twitter at ODU Panthers underscore WBB. This upcoming season, Olivia Fox will be a senior on the Ohio Dominican Women's Basketball team. Last year, she established career highs in points per game and minutes played, and throughout her career has not missed a game of her career at Ohio Dominican, which is quite an achievement. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. Olivia, thanks for being with us here today. Uh, first off, I guess, how has your mindset changed in just the past couple of weeks or so, now knowing that you can kind of get back out onto the court, you can start working out with your team, albeit on a limited basis, compared to all of those weeks sitting on a couch not doing anything prior? <laughs> well, it's one, a much like happier, I'm excited. I mean, being a senior, this wasn't quite how I thought I was gonna go into mm. my senior year and everything. But I mean, our team does a good job of keeping in contact. So we've kept in contact throughout this whole thing. And uh, with campus opening back up, I actually got into the gym and was able to do a workout. And hopefully soon we'll be able to phase in and do some more like open gyms and stuff. So I'm like, just excited to get back out there, getting closer. I mean, this has been a weird summer, but we're getting closer and I'm ready to start my senior season and everything. Thinking back, gosh, I don't know, middle school, how long <laughs> had you gone from being away from a team and not dribbling a basketball? Yeah, honestly, since I started AU, I've been playing almost year round basketball. I mean, there's break times in like, August when you wouldn't be allowed to be on a high school court with your coach. But I mean, I would still go into my gyms and everything. I was never not allowed to be in a gym. And so that was definitely weird. I don't have a great hoop at my house. I mean, I have something, so I'm happy about that. But no, being in a real gym the other day felt good. I, it really was weird, though, being back and being like, oh, my gosh, it's been like three months since I've been on a real mm -hmm. court on <laughs> with a real ball. Like, it felt great, though. I know for all of us coming back to campus, it, it was a weird feeling because, like you said, we've been gone for so long. And for some of us who've been here for so long, just even just driving back onto campus kind of felt awkward. Oh, yeah. I mean, just driving back is I mean, not like we have a huge campus or anything, but it's still like felt I just felt all the good vibes and everything mm. from being back. I mean, we left in the middle of this, never really got to say the good buys to campus for the summer and everything. So it definitely was like, it just felt back at home. Like that's what I was missing. So that was nice. So what were you able to kind of get out and do on your own? You said you didn't have, you know, a great access to a basketball hoop, but I imagine from a physical standpoint, you know, last year you were in the best physical condition that you had been in a long time. How were you able to kind of keep that regiment going? Um, so luckily I have a pretty nice setup in my basement. And so my dad, we've had like a cable machine type setup. And so he's allowed me to like kind of buy my own weights and make that into my own little gym. So I have like a free weights now in my basement. So 
that was like my quarantine project. So I, I've been able to stay like physically fit doing that. I, we have a track, so I go run on the track. And then like, I do have like probably like half a court, like maybe like a three point line length in my driveway that I can shoot some. I don't have a great, it's an old hoop. It's been through a lot, but it's something. So I've been able to stay in what I would think pretty good shape. I'm just trying to continue that. I enjoy working out. So that's been something different than normal and I've been healthy. So that's been nice. You should have put like a, a Nerf hoop down in that basement. <laughs> you could have worked up posting yeah. up and dunking, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mentioned earlier, you know, on the court, the first two seasons, it, and it actually surprised me when I looked at this, you had not missed a game in your three years, 29 games, all three years coming in now to your senior year, because I know how hard it's been for you to battle through really kind of a unique injury that we don't need to get into details of, but you did have to have a surgery and you were able to come back stronger than ever last year. Take me through just the mental strain that you had to put yourself through those first two years to stay on the floor. I mean, coming in as a freshman, it was a completely different environment and everything. So I think just adjusting, I like started off well, and then it's just kind of like you're getting to play better girls and you're not used to the competition and you're back to being a freshman again. And I think that the, that was more of a mental roller coaster than anything going through physically wise, because I was in pretty good health my freshman year. I And then coming into sophomore year, I was more excited, like I knew what I was expecting and then start working out and I realized I had some injuries. And so sophomore year was a battle of like, how can I stay in shape with being limited on running and lifting and things like that. And it was definitely hard. And now looking back, I feel like I probably could have done a better job of trying to stay in shape, but it was trying to find that like good balance of it. And then, I mean, junior year, I had the surgery. I mean, I still had some problems, but I definitely knew how to deal with it. And I knew that like where I was mentally and physically was in a much better place. And I was ready to go out there for my junior year. So was there anybody in particular or was this just yourself with a new mindset of your training, your physical conditioning for your junior season? Um, I wouldn't say there's anyone in particular. I mean, my parents would always my dad especially was like I think that you should just be in better shape and everything just trying to like because he likes to watch me play and he wants that and so I just I knew that I had like let myself go through the surgery like before the surgery and everything so I was like I'm gonna like get healthy and then it just kind of hit a point where like I enjoyed where I was at and like being healthy and so it changed my entire lifestyle now I work out almost every day I eat pretty healthy like i completely changed my entire lifestyle and I enjoy it. I feel better. I feel like healthier outside of just basketball. And then it obviously helps me a lot in basketball, being able to run for longer and just faster and things like that. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Thinking forward now to this upcoming season, it is your senior year, as as you said, and boy, time flies, doesn't it? Here we we are ready to roll into your senior season and we know it's going to look a little differently, but can you tell me some of maybe if it's your personal goals, team goals, some of the things that you would really like to achieve in your final year here at uh, Ohio Dominic? Um, so with the changes and everything, I mean, a personal goal that I had that I still have is just to be more consistent. I feel like some games I come in and just that inconsistency and I know like experience helps with that but I still like that's my personal goal is to know and every game coach can count on me my teammates can count on me I'll be there even if I'm not having like the best performance of my game I'll be there to help my teammates and I'll be there on the bench and things like that and then team goals I'm depending on how the season looks I'd love to like win a playoff game but even more than that I'd love to win the GMAC going out I mean that would just be ideal. We're hosting the elite eight and everything being able to do that on your home court. That'd be pretty cool. But I mean, I think it starts like with winning the first playoff game and going from there. Cause we still haven't won a playoff game. We came close at Finley and I'd like to be able to like start set the path. Even if we can't win 
everything. I want to help set the path for like the teams behind us to like, they can finish what we're starting right now. It seems like a, a hump that needs to be accomplished. Yes. We yeah. need to get over that hump, uh, get that first tournament win. And, and who knows after that, what can happen? I find your comment there at the end is kind of interesting because even if it's not winning a bunch of tournament games and getting to the NCAs or to the elite eight, you still want to continue the path. And we talked with Coach Warren earlier about five consecutive winning seasons, five straight teams making conference tournaments. You've been a part of that and continuing the growth. How are you now seeing your role change as a senior compared to as that freshman coming in, you were looking for guidance. Now you're the one giving guidance to the younger players that are coming in. Yeah, I mean, I think my role quickly changed because now because we're not allowed to be on the court or we're not able to be on the court as much and it makes it harder with people have less access to gyms and everything we have to be more like we have to hold our teammates accountable and having that like balance is like definitely difficult to find in the beginning but I think now I'm like stepping into that like role that I'm supposed to play and I think that that will help me in season because we've built we're building a level of trust with everyone on the team now and that it'll be able to communicate better. And then I'll try to lead by example and I'll do all the things that I had seniors that did when I was a freshman. But I think that a big part of it was just building trust in the beginning and now's a weird time. So it's the best time to build the trust with your Mm -hmm. teammates and know that like, even through this like hardship, we'll still be like, I'll be there for you. All the other seniors will be there for you. And, you can count on everyone on your team. Olivia, earlier on, you mentioned the good vibes that you feel here on this campus. And through a personal exchange that you and I have had, you told me the same thing, that you knew that this was the right decision for you coming to Ohio Dominican. Explain to me why you feel that way and how you would describe that to other people who might be considering the next school that they want to go to when it comes to college. Yeah, so I think a lot of why I like ODU or love ODU so much is that I would play tournament games in high school there. We won them. I was just able to meet with the coaches and we did shootouts here. So I was able to come to ODU a lot. And some people don't have that experience, but Mm -hmm. I still think that when you go on a, on a campus, you get to see how like you imagine yourself in it and you know really what you would like and everything like that. And so I think that for me, talking to the coaches, talking to the players, it just, I knew it instantly. And I still, like, even with the freshmen, when people, when we recruit people, I think that being able to talk to the recruits is really nice because you can see, are they going to fit well in here? Because it goes both ways. Like, you're they're looking for a home, but we're still looking for a teammate that we can trust in everything. And your experiences here on campus, I'm going to assume, have continued that good feeling that you've had all along here. Oh, yeah. I couldn't imagine how much I would actually like love ODU. I mean, everyone's I feel like everyone's hesitant to choose the college because that's your four years. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess that you're like signing away kind of. And it, so, I mean, you're nervous, but I love the professors. I love the small class because I'm pretty like I take my school serious and everything. And being able to like get to know your professors helps out in classes and everything. So I've love the decision I made. And I'm so happy that I made the decision to come to ODU. Well, we're certainly happy that you're here as well. Looking forward to that senior season on the basketball floor. All right. Those are the easy questions. I don't know if those were easy or not. Now how about the fun questions. All right. This is how I love to end these interviews with our student athletes. A little fast five here. We're going to learn a little bit about you and see how uh, quickly you can think on your feet. Are you ready for these? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. You wear the number 24 now. And you wore the number 24 in high school. Why? Uh, They did have the number 45. And that was the last jersey that they had in all three (laughs) colors we had in high school. (laughs) But you continue to wear it here then as well. Yeah, it just kind of stuck now. (laughs) Man, I was looking for a great story out of that. And I got because that was all that was left. All right, perfect. Absolutely. Um, Thinking to all of the places we go within our conference, is there a place that you particularly like to go uh, and or play at? Um, I'd say Finley probably. I just like playing at Finley's gym because they have like the super competitive vibes. I've had mm-hmm. decent games in Finley. I don't know. I just 
I like the comp like I feel like there's an added level of like the fans like are really rooting against you and it's like I'm gonna show you that we're better than you guys are and I like that. <laughs> it, and this isn't part of it. Do you feel like that's our rival? Is that a, is that our basketball rival? I think so. I like I mean when we go into Finley week, we're gunning for it mm. and I mean, we go in every week and we want to win and everything, but it's just something about it that we just, we're going, like, we're going for it and we're going to win. And I mean, we had two really close games this year Mm -hmm. and last year we beat them both times. So that was like a really good, like, it's just a, we, it's always a good hard fought game. And so I like that. And so I like playing there too. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So in between working out and shooting on a hoop, that's not so good uh, and not working on a Nerf hoop, like I suggested, uh, was there anything you binged watch uh, through some sort of uh, streaming uh, option? Um, No, I've actually not had a ton of time. I work and do, I'm in like summer classes. So I've watched white collar. That's what I watch every night. So I like that's, binge watching i guess <laughs> <laughs> um whether it's as a tiny little olivia fox or a now grown-up bigger olivia fox your favorite sports moment that you've uh, been a part of um i would say my favorite sports moment that i've been a part of was the 2008 celtics team watching that because that really solidified my love for basketball i'm my family's from new england so we're big boston fan and so i was that was finally the age i started to understand Mm. more and everything and i just fell in love with the game there got to go to the parade and then like high school for a personal moment i liked my senior year of high school it ended badly but it was just like everything that we did within that year just was great and like that just to me just helped it so yeah, well, that's a great story. Uh, your favorite Celtic player on those teams then, who was that? It was Rondo, which is, I'm not a point guard, but <laughs> I loved watching him play. <laughs> All right, last one. Uh, your high school mascot is a wildcat, and your college mascot is a panther. So which is the better cat, a wildcat or a panther? A panther, for sure. What's right. a wildcat even? <laughs> <laughs> Well, a panther really is a leopard just colored black, so it's really kind of bizarre as well. It, that's it? You're just going with the panther? You're happy with that? Yeah, I like the panther. I don't like I, I I don't know what they would be like in a fight. That's huh? that's that's a good point. That's a good point. All right, we'll we'll investigate that. I'm sure Google will help us with that. Oh, uh, sure. Olivia, as always, great to catch up with you. Can't wait to see you when uh, you and your teammates are able to get to campus and start being more active, and we look forward to your senior season. Thanks for having me. All right, that'll wrap up another edition of Panther Podcast Weekly. A reminder that you can view past episodes by going to our YouTube page and subscribe. Search Ohio Dominican Athletics and follow as well ODU Athletics on both Facebook and on Twitter. My thanks to head coach Lindsey Warren and Olivia Fox for being part of this week's show. This is Todd Bell. Thanks for watching. And remember, it's always a great day to be a Panther. Panther.